it's the whole thing is ruined because I pressed. It's not your fault, Lily. It's not. It's because I pressed the wrong button. So now we're gonna have two videos. I'll have to smush together. That's okay. I can deal with it. Fine. When I drop my uh, cabeza de muerto, the there's a net force. Let me see if I can draw this little feller. Good. I'm doing a great job so far. He's got eyes like that. His nose is an upside down heart, and his teeth are spooky. Okay. So when I when I drop this guy. Okay, he's got flowers too. Come on, Tommy. Whatever. Now, <laughs> just like he's got green chicken pox, green eggs and chicken pox. Okay, um, when I drop him, uh, you can probably even see if you slow the video down a little bit, but there's a, there's a net force I'm going to put. This is the center of mass. We usually diagram force diagrams, if you remember from eighth grade, from the center of mass. The F sub G, the force of gravity, is acting downward, meaning his acceleration will be downward. Always. This is Newton's second law of motion. What I just said is Newton's second law of motion. Tell me, tell me again so we can write it down. What is Newton's second law of motion? No, you don't read it to me. You tell me based on what we're already talking about. Okay, and therefore it must do what down? Accelerate down. So we're, you, you, you said the correct answer by way of an example. The correct answer was that this net force acting down means the object must accelerate down. That's a specific example, but the, the, the general law, let me rewrite this so it actually looks like the English language. The general law is that any net force, how, what else could we say instead of net force? Unbalanced force. Those things are, if not identical, they are equivalent. Any net force causes acceleration in the same direction as the fill in the blank. Nope, not always. Not, not, not that specific. Acceleration in the same direction. In, that, in this case, Garrett, you're right. It, this would be in the direction of the acceleration of gravity or in the direction of the force of gravity. But in, in general, any net force causes acceleration in the same direction as the... No? Try again. You can get it. Keep trying. Which way Which way on my cabeza de azocada is... It's, yeah, the net force is down. So which way is it going to accelerate? Wouldn't it be weird if I let go? Woof! That would be crazy. What if, what if when I push this went the other direction. That would be ludicrous. That would never happen. That has never happened in the history of the universe. Because net forces cause acceleration in the same direction as the, yeah, as the net force. It has to be in the same direction. So, so what if something is slowing down? Uh-oh, now we're going to get into a pickle. What if, what's a, what's a way that you guys move around the, your lives? Do you, yeah, do you, you drive? What kind of vehicle do you drive, Tegan? Semi truck. <laughs> Tegan, the truck driver. So Tegan, with her 18 wheeler. I'm only gonna draw this part of it because I don't want to, and it's, it is really full of pollution. Tegan is bad for the environment personally, um, and it's a Mac, obviously. Good job. Um, here's Tegan in there. Okay, Tegan is trucking at. Let's just use American units because it is a. It's a truck driver. So Tegan's got her spicy de bomb burrito from, from Maverick, and she's got two Red Bulls in the other hand, and she's trucking along from Shadron to Crawford, let's say, at 86 miles per hour. Okay? Well, first of all, she's a trucker. Second of all, it is Tegan. And third of all, she has these Red Bulls, so what's she going to do? Anyway, in the middle of the road, then. Uh-oh. It's... Lucas. <laughs> it's Monday. And he is just he is just happy. Um, what does Lucas like to do? Does anyone know anything about Lucas? He likes He's playing Fortnite. <laughs> That's this is the rectangle of Fortnite. Gosh, this is too good. I need to we're gonna have to redo this video in a way that it's more boring. Anyway, um Tegan's trucking along. Lucas is in the road. So she has to apply. How can, what's the only way we can change motion? 
No, no, that's not, that's not the right answer. What's the only way, according to Newton's second law, that we can change motion? What's the only way that we can cause an acceleration? An unbalanced force. A net force in what direction? Well, if we want to, it, yeah, so this is velocity. Velocity equals 86 miles per hour. We'll say left. We'll say um, Tegan is driving left, just because this is the diagram. But we need to change the velocity in order for Lucas not to die, which is our goal. We want that. In order for Lucas not to die, we need to change the velocity. Which direction? Right. right. Yeah, we have to accelerate right. I'm going to do this at a different point. We, mu we need to accelerate right. So how can, if we're moving left, how can we accelerate right? What do we call that? No. If we're, if we're moving one direction and we want to accelerate the opposite direction, what do we call that? Slowing down. This is how we slow down. Slow down is when velocity and acceleration are in opposite directions. So we need to, in order to accelerate right, what does Newton's second law, what does Newton secondarily tell us? In his second law, Newton says that we must do what? If we want to accelerate right, we must do what right? We must apply a what in the rightward direction. Yeah, a net force in the rightward. So I'm using black as my velocity, green as my acceleration, God bless you. I need to, therefore, apply a force, F sub net. I need to apply a net force rightward. How can I do that? What can provide, what general universal force can provide a force in the opposite direction of motion? That's too specific. What general universal force, you're, you're right in both cases, but you're being too specific. What general universal force provides a force opposite motion? Nope, that's not opposite motion. That's always down. That's how we define down. She said gravity, by the way. What else? Let's keep going, though. Air resistance is a type of this still, and that is, that is going to help a little bit. Yes, but you, now you're too broad. Thank you, Joe. Friction. Friction always opposes motion. I'm going to put in parentheses. Or intended motion. To address the latter part, and I'm going to abbreviate this capital F, which stands for Friction. force, sub F, sub lowercase f, which stands for friction. This one was F sub G. What does F sub G probably stand for? Capital F is, again, force, sub G is gravity. So F sub F, the force of friction, always opposes motion or intended motion. Look, do you remember Newton's first law? We talked about this last time, but let's write it down because we already have Newton's second law, and I want to use it as a reminder. What, what is Newton's first law? I'm going to put it above Newton's second law. I'm also going to sneeze. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Miranda. Um, so, let's, yeah, we're reminding ourselves of Newton's first law. And this will just give us a nice little pile here of Newton's laws. First law of motion. I have a hard time writing the word law. Newton's first law of motion was an object in motion or at rest continues with a constant velocity, it, it can't change its direction either, velocity unless a, no, a net force happens to it. Object in motion or at rest. Remember, what are the two ways that an object can be um, not accelerating? The easiest one is what? Stop. Stopped, just sitting there, at rest. What's the other one? Straight line at a constant speed. And that only changes unless there's a net force. That only changes if there's a net force. Um, what's, the, what's the one word answer to this? What do we call this thing in one word? Crash. No, not no, no. I mean this. Newton's first law of motion. No? Well, anyway, that was on your test, and actually you almost all got it right, so I'm a little bit bamboozled. No, that's not true. Both of those are lies. Anyway, so this inertia, or Newton's first law, tells us that if I put any force on this, wait, first of all, pretend it's stopped, because it is kind of unstable, and it's wiggling a little bit just from the air conditioner, um, but pretend this thing is stopped, 
Why does it stay stopped according to Newton's first law? Because no what is acting on it? Yeah, and there is no net force. Does that mean the same thing as there is no force acting on it? No, no it, it means it may have forces, but they're balanced. What, what are the balanced forces on this? Let me try to draw this thing. Good job. Okay, um, what are the balanced forces acting on it? Gravity. Yep, F sub G, gravity. And the weight of the, or the pushing of the floor. Yeah, we call that the normal force. You can call it that too. Normal force, sometimes called the normal support force. But when something like this box of markers is just sitting here, and it's not falling down through the table, it's because the table is supporting it upward, and we call that support force the normal force. So gravity's pulling it down, the normal force is pulling it, well, holding it up, and it's got only balanced forces, so it does not move, it stays at rest. Aye aye? So far so good, right? Now, Newton's first law also tells us that if I put an unbalanced force on this, it must move, it must change its motion. So in this case, I'm putting an unbalanced force this way to my left, which is your right, which is west. I'm putting an unbalanced force westward on it. But doesn't Newton's first law tell us that it'll keep doing that forever unless acted upon by an unbalanced force? So why doesn't it? Newton's wrong. Yeah, so Newton must be wrong. Right, there's friction. Friction. And the way you can kind of think of this in your head, there is friction here that stops this from moving forever in a straight line in that direction. And the friction is with the floor in this case. Because friction always opposes motion or intended motion. Now what if what if and I'm not quite this weak, but what if I were very weak and I was trying to pull this, but I could not get it to move? What's holding it there? No? Friction. Again, friction. Friction always opposes motion or intended motion. So it always opposes the motion that's already happening or the motion that would happen if I were pulling harder. And the friction holds it there. And the friction happens why? Why does friction occur? Because, because. great, let's move on. No, because if we look at this microscopically, what's the bottom of the little feeties of this guy look like? They look like metal, they look roughly flat to us, but are they perfectly flat in real life? No, they look flat. And what about the floor? It looks like yeah, this is, you can even probably, the floors are very nicely waxed, and I think that the people who wax the floor do a great job, but you can tell it's not a mirror finish, right? It's not perfectly smooth, and so it has some rumblies too. And when those two things get together, they can, that's why it kind of moves in a like jerking or jolting fashion, is because they got these bumps that stick together when they're settled, and then to get it to move, you have to overcome the bump, okay? What's a way that we can make this friction less? We could sand them both down. Yeah, we could make them both smoother. Okay, Tommy brings up a good point. We could lift it up, right? If I, if I lift it even a little bit, oh, it's so much easier to move. Because friction depends on how smooth these surfaces are. Depends on smooth smoothness of surfaces and how hard, I'm going to use that, I'm use the science word instead. I was going to say how hard they're pressed together, but I'm going to instead say, and the forces holding them together. Generally, generally the normal force. In fact, the equation for the force of friction is F sub F equals F sub N mu, where mu, which is a Greek letter, is the coefficient of friction. You will learn this and you will do math with it in physics, but basically this number tells us how smooth the, both the surfaces are, and there's like tables and tables and tables online where it'll say like rubber and concrete, steel and brass, like there's a different coefficient of friction for those two objects, whatever two objects they are. So there would be one for wood and metal, and we would put that single number in here. And then the force, the normal force, the force squishing them together. If I really press down on it, I'm going to ruin the floor, so I pretend I'm doing this, but if I really press down on it, it's going to be harder to move, right? If I lift up on it, this number gets smaller, and if I push down on it, this number gets larger, even though this stays the same, and therefore friction changes. Um, I'm going to use this. Can I use this? Um, the answer is yes. What direction does gravity always work? Always down, write that down. Gravity is always working down. Gravity is always down. You probably shouldn't even have to write that down because, sorry. Here you go. 
note, please write down that gravity always works down. F sub g always down. That's actually, that's actually how we as human beings define what down is. It's the direction gravity works. That's why if you're on like a roof, if you're doing roofing and you're on a roof, down is not relative to the slope of the roof. It's relative to the ground, right? It's down. Down is down. So gravity, the force of gravity is always down. And the normal force, I'm going to have to erase something here. The normal force, um, I want to keep that, this. The normal force F sub n. Remember the normal force? What's the normal force do? Normal. It's normal. Be, be more better than that. No, what's the normal force do? Mm -hmm. if you think of it this way. If I put my coffee cup down here, I can reasonably expect that it's not going to keep falling. The normal force is going to provide a force that balances gravity. However, if I put my coffee cup down here, do you, do you, can you see that on screen? If, I, if this is the table I'm using, I'm not going to be able to reasonably assume that this won't be pulled down. However, again, however, I can put my marker on here probably, right? The normal force is strong enough of this paper to hold the marker up, but not to hold my cup up. I'm not even going to try. So the normal force provides a counteraction to gravity, and the normal force always acts perpendicular to the surface. Is that the same thing as up? Is it always the same thing as up? Is it the same thing as up right now? Check it out, Garrett. Yeah, you're right, but look at what's happening. Is the normal force still acting straight up? No, it's acting perpendicular to the surface. So let's, let me diagram this, because uh, here's, here's the table. Here's my coffee cup. Which way is gravity acting? Yeah. Now listen, is it that? That's not down, so it's not acting in that way. It's acting down. It's acting down. Which way is the normal force acting, though? Straight up? No, what's the rule? Yeah, it's up. It's perpendicular. It's at a right angle to the surface. So now the normal force actually has to be stronger than gravity because it, it only is counteracted by this y component, what we call it. This, only this part of the normal force is... If I lift this high enough, basically... What's going to happen? Uh, that really made me scared, actually. Um, let me do it again with this box in the way. What's holding it down right now? Gravity. Gravity. If I lift this up, I'm changing the amount of the normal force because this upward component of the normal force is counteracting gravity. What's counteracting this part of the normal force, the x component? What must be working on it? What's acting in this direction? What's opposing the motion? Friction. So the, the more friction there is, the steeper angle basically I can get this to be at. Ah, woo. Which has, let's do a little, uh, let's do a little race here. Which is going to have more friction? The skull or the marker box? Which do you think? The marker box is going to have more friction, and how can we test that? By lifting the table up. Oh. Now, now let me demonstrate it this way. Now my skull is on its side. Now what? It's going to roll. Well, so what? So, so was, does that mean that this changed? Is this skull made out of a different material the second time? Yeah. No. What happened? Well, there's different kinds of friction. You remember this from your vocab. What are the different kinds of friction? There's sliding, which is one of the boxes. There's rolling. And there's fluid. Oh, and there is static. Um, static is what is the kind of friction that's holding it in place. Static means stay. So right now, it's static friction holding both of them in place. What kind of friction is the, is the box going to get? Sliding. What about the skull? Rolling. Rolling. In that case, the skull did not roll quite as big as I wanted it to. Let's put a turner. There we go. Rolling. 
rolling friction is, for, the, for a given two surfaces, rolling friction is always less. I would, maybe I shouldn't say always. Rolling friction is usually less. That's why wheels work so good. That's why, back to TK's 18 wheel, that's why the wheels are a good idea for moving the truck along. It's because there's less friction than if it were like skis. <laughs> you know, that would be a crazy design for an 18 wheeler just to have skis on it. Um, once again, back to the 18 wheeler. So what can I do to make it so Tegan doesn't hit Lucas? Friction, yeah, that's what brakes do. Brakes generate friction. Have you ever touched brakes? Don't touch brakes if they've just been used because they get super, super, super hot. Because the job of friction, F sub F, changes kinetic energy to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that out because we haven't quite talked about that, but kinetic energy to thermal energy. But if I had my marker box here, and it slides all the way down to the other end, it will be very slightly hotter at that end than it was at this end. Probably immeasurably small because the friction is not very much. But you also notice that when you, that's why this works when you're at the football game and it's cold out, is because you're, you're turning, you're using the sliding of your hands together, the kinetic energy that you're providing them to cause thermal energy that warms your hands up. That's friction. The normal force always acts perpendicular to the surface. Friction opposes motion. Um, gravity always acts straight down. And all of these things, all of these forces, all of the forces cause what? I'm sorry, all of these net forces cause a almost, not always. Motion. Acceleration, yeah. They cause a change in motion, which is acceleration. Um, does your does this chapter of your book talk about Newton's third law too? Is that one of your vocab words? Okay, let me let's just mention that real quick. Newton's third law. Newton's third law. You already know it. This is like the most famous one, the one that's the most first grade rhyming poetry to memorize. I'm going to give you a, a, the beginning of a sentence frame for every. Yeah, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. In fact, a better way to phrase this is that every force is part of an interaction. There, it's not an action and a reaction, it's two interactions. Be very careful. Um, let's, let's use the example of Tegan again. If, if she's not hitting Lucas, so if she's avoided Lucas, she's back on track, she's still trucking along, she's still got her two Red Bulls, she's, she's very happy that she didn't become a vehicular manslaughterer, and so now she's trucking along at 102 miles per hour. First of all, why does the engine have to keep running? Newton's first law tells us that this truck will just keep moving on its own. Why does the engine have to keep running? To overcome friction. friction. There's friction between the tires and the road. Right? And so the engine has to keep cut run, running to overcome the friction. That's why the engine kind of cuts out a little bit if you have the cruise on when you're coming down a hill, because you no longer need quite as much help because gravity's helping you out. Gravity's providing a force in the same direction. But she's trucking along at 102 miles per hour. Let's think about her wheels now. Which direction are these wheels probably spinning? Tell me counterclockwise or clockwise? They're spinning counterclockwise. What? Why? That's the opposite of the direction she wants to go, right? You're right, it is counterclockwise, but why? She's putting a force backward? Yeah, okay, exactly. Because of Newton's third law, it tells us that if she puts a force back, a force back, the force of, oh, I don't know what you call it, the engine's force, the force of push, the engine's pushing it back, what does the ground do to her? Because of Newton's third law. The ground pushes her through friction, forward. That's why, even though we want, if we wanted to move this, we would want it to be smooth as butter, right? If we wanted to slide something, we might even lube it up, right? We might put some butter or oil or something on the floor to fill in these gaps. That's what lube does. Um, but on the road, we want a nice rough tire made of rubber, which is really grabby, and we want a nice rough road because we want to increase friction on the road because that's what pushes cars along is friction. 
Now, how come, if these two things are equal and opposite, how come they don't cancel out? This is the last thing before we go. Why don't these two forces cancel? No, they're the exact same. They are the exact same in magnitude, and they're exactly opposite in direction. What's the push force acting on? On the, no, the for, the, on the road. The push force is acting on the road. What's the friction force acting on? On the tire. Because, so the answer to the question, and please write this down, why don't interactions, why don't the action and reaction forces cancel? Why don't they cancel? Question mark. They act on different objects. And since Newton's second law also tells us F equals MA, force equals mass times acceleration, which one's heavier, the truck or the world? The world, the world is heavier, and so the acceleration, the acceleration of the truck is going to be much greater because it has a less mass. Let's say the same force is going to be pushing on the truck by the world as on the world by the truck. The truck has a little baby mass, and so it gets a great big, big old acceleration. And the world has a great big mass, and so it only gets a tiny acceleration. Kind of makes sense? Yeah. This is everything from the chapter, I believe. Um, we, it took a little bit longer than I wanted, but I think we got through it all. Do you have questions about, first of all, F equals MA? You'll have a worksheet about this math. We only mentioned it right at the bitter end. Do you have questions about F equals MA? No. What unit do we measure force in? Do you remember from last year? Oof, no, come on. Force. force, measured in newtons, good. Mass is measured in kilograms, and acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. Do you have questions about any of Newton's three laws? No. Even this one about why they don't cancel? You know that? Yeah. Because they're acting, on different they're acting on different objects. Do you have questions about friction or the normal force? No. Acceleration and net forces in general? You're just going to answer no because you think I'm going to let you go early. Goodbye, bye Lucas.